Tokyo, 1934. A spy scheme unfolds near the Imperial Palace. Two American dollar bills with consecutive serial numbers. A clever recognition signal between Soviet spy Richard Sorga and his new recruit. Nazi-occupied Paris, 1941. Leopold Trepper mixes business and pleasure to cover a far-flung network of Soviet secret agents the Nazis call the Red Orchestra. Master spies for Stalin, at work under deep cover in the heart of the enemy camp. city hostile to foreigners. A few blocks away, the Imperial Hotel is an Occidental oasis. Designed by the American architect Frank Lloyd Wright, the hotel is one of the few places in Tokyo where outsiders feel at home. One day in 1934, the Imperial is the scene of a mysterious meeting. In the lobby, the doorman greets a German newspaper correspondent and leads him to an upstairs room. Waiting inside is a secret courier from Moscow. The German newspaper man is more than the distinguished journalist his papers describe. Name, Richard Sorga, age 39. Codename, Ramsey. Born in Russia of a Russian mother and German father. Student volunteer in the German army, World War I. Richard Sorga is a product of the bloody trenches when German student volunteers charge Allied machine guns in human waves. Sorga blames capitalism for the war and the chaos that follows. He joins Germany's Red Revolution, earns a PhD, summa cum laude, in Hamburg. When the German communists fail to gain power and are destroyed politically, Richard Sorga goes to Moscow and chooses Soviet citizenship. He becomes a protege of General Jan Antonovich Berzin, brilliant chief of the Red Army's fabled Fourth Department, Stalin's global military spy network. The department trains Sorga in spycraft, then assigns him to Japan. Sorga is first sent back to Germany and travels to Berlin to set up his cover. He obtains credentials from German newspaper editors, eager to add a freelance correspondent in the Far East. Tokyo is at the center of recent events of worldwide importance. A dream come true for a newsman and a spy. September. 1931. The Japanese army occupies Manchuria, gaining control of a long land frontier with the Soviet Union, increasing Stalin's fear of Japan. The military renames Manchuria Manchukuo and sets up deposed Chinese Emperor Henry Puyi as puppet ruler, without the approval of the Japanese Premier. Several months later, army fanatics assassinate the Premier hoping to destroy Japan's political party system. The militarists also bomb the Japanese parliament in an effort to bring about martial law. In Moscow, Sorga's boss, Joseph Stalin, is desperate to learn what the Japanese will do next. Stalin wants to know if Japan intends to attack Russia, and if so, Exactly when and where along the thousands of miles of Soviet Asian border now manned or threatened by the belligerent Japanese militarists. It is Sorga's mission to find out. 
To enhance his cover as a hard-drinking foreign correspondent, Sorga frequents the Ginza's Rheingold Bar, a favorite watering hole of German officials. The patrons don't seem to notice that the swastikas point the wrong way. It's the German owner's clever way of expressing distaste for the Nazis. Nor does the Rheingold staff, the waiters and waitresses who have come to know Sorga so well, suspect that he heads a communist spy ring. Sorga's team comes from Belgrade, Berlin, and Los Angeles, each one with a recognition signal devised in Moscow. Miyagi Yotoku is an artist from California where his family moved when he was a boy. The American Communist Party returns him to Japan as Sorga's translator, carrying a US dollar bill for identification. In Tokyo, Sorga also has a dollar bill. They compare serial numbers. The numbers are consecutive. Miyagi joins the ring. Branko Vukelic comes from Yugoslavia. His recognition signal is a classified ad for Japanese prints placed in an English language Tokyo newspaper. Vukelic poses as a photojournalist his assignment is to photograph Sorga's stolen spy documents for delivery to Moscow. Sorga's radio operator, Max Clausen, worked with him on an earlier spy mission. Trained in Moscow, Clausen is expert at building radios. Clausen's transmitters are tiny but powerful enough to reach Soviet Asia for relay to Moscow. What Sorga needs now is a highly placed native Japanese well-informed, well-connected, a man willing to betray his own country. Richard Sorga chooses an idyllic setting for a secret rendezvous to round out his spy ring, the Deer Park at Nara. He meets with a Marxist friend who has access to Japan's rich and powerful name, Hatsumi Ozaki, age 32, code name, Otto. Born on Japan's island colony of Formosa. Education, law and political science. Occupation, reporter and editor for the influential newspaper, Asahi Shimbun. Amid Nara's fairy tale landscape, Sorga asks Ozaki to spy on his homeland. Ozaki proudly accepts. He hates the imperialist fervor gripping Japan. As a communist, he is driven by a desire to protect Russia from Japanese aggression. Through his prestigious newspaper, Ozaki becomes a member of an influential Japanese policy research group. He mingles with the military, industrial, and academic elite of Japan. Ozaki also joins the Breakfast Club, young intellectuals who meet weekly to advise Prime Minister Kinoye. Through Ozaki, Sorga gains access to major Japanese secrets and transmits them to Moscow. At the German embassy, Sorga passes on scraps of less important intelligence to the German ambassador, Eugene Hahn. The ambassador comes to depend on Sorga as his best source. In return, Sorga has the run of the embassy, even a small office, with access to sensitive diplomatic files. Sorga learns about plans for a triple alliance of Japan, Italy, and Germany. He passes this vital information on to the Kremlin. July 1937. The Japanese invade northern China. By the end of the month, they control Peking. The Kremlin urgently asks Sorga if Japan intends to attack the Soviet Union. Sorga taps his German sources. Ozaki taps his Japanese sources. They tell Moscow it means a long war between Japan and China that will not involve the Soviet Union. 
July 1938. Russian patrol on a hill called Chang Kufang is attacked by Japanese troops. Here, the Soviet Union borders Manchukuo and Korea. Once more, Sorga is reassuring. He tells Moscow the Japanese will not allow this affair to escalate. It does not. When he thinks the Kremlin might be interested in official German files on the China incidents, Sorga simply opens the appropriate drawer at the embassy and captures it on film. Sometimes he even slips the film into the German diplomatic pouch to Shanghai, where a Soviet agent forwards it to Moscow. Early 1941, Sorga sends a warning to Moscow. He has seen a secret message from Berlin to Ambassador Ott. It reveals that the Nazis will invade the Soviet Union code name Operation Barbarossa. Sorga even gives Stalin the exact date, June 22nd. Stalin receives no less than 84 warnings of the Nazi invasion from his secret agents. He ignores all of them. One of the warnings of the Nazi attack on the Soviet Union comes from Stalin's largest spy network in Europe. The Germans call it Die Rote Kapelle, the Red Orchestra. Using ingenious covers, the Red Orchestra operates under the very noses of Nazi intelligence and Gestapo officers. The Germans call the spy network an orchestra because in spy jargon, radio operators are called piano players. The Red Orchestra's conductor in Paris, like Sorga in Tokyo, is a protege of Moscow spy boss Jan Antonovich Berzin. Name, Leopold Trepper. Age, 38. Codename, Gilbert. A factory worker and communist agitator, he becomes head of Soviet espionage throughout Western Europe. As cover for Red Orchestra, Trepper runs an import-export business called Simex, on the Champs-Élysées in the Lido building. It's located across the street from the head office of the giant Nazi war construction company known as the Tote Organization. Soon the two firms' executives are mingling at the cabaret Lido, the Soviet spies and the German businessmen. Incredibly, Simex becomes a major supplier for the Nazis selling Tote everything from cement to heavy engineering equipment. All of it acquired on the black market. Even material to build the Nazis' Atlantic Wall on the northern coast of France. Trepper becomes a wildly successful war profiteer who enjoys the good life, expensive restaurants and fine wine. Through Simex, Trepper's agents penetrate the highest levels of the German military feed the information to Moscow. Where Tote goes, the spies from Simex follow. October 1941. Trepper's Red Orchestra is a massive spy network. Its hidden radio transmitters report to Moscow Center from Paris, Brussels, Amsterdam, even from the heart of Germany in Berlin. Berlin, July 1941. Hitler's campaign to conquer Europe is moving forward on schedule. But Hitler's fortunes in Russia will soon turn sour. The headquarters for Nazi military planning has been infiltrated by the Red Orchestra. It is headed by this rare photo who has infiltrated the Luftwaffe. Son of a wealthy landowner, Schultz Boysen despises the cruel good friend. He joins the Red Orchestra with a passion to get even. Soon, direct from the German capital, the Red Orchestra is reporting on German high command strategy. Plans for attacks on Allied convoys to Murmansk and logistic problems during the bitter campaign in Russia. Brussels, December 1941. Trepper's number two in command, a Red Orchestra agent codenamed Kent, runs to Mexico, 
the Belgian subsidiary of Simex. Radio signals. The radio direction finding team gives German counterintelligence its first big break. The team uses a van filled with sensitive radio detection equipment to track and home in on radio signals from Brussels' Interbank district. In two weeks of intensive work, the direction finders narrow the search to a single residential block in the Rue des Arbrebat, for 101. Within these walls, German agents capture a Red Orchestra radio operator. They find a charred scrap of paper containing groups of still legible coded numbers. A team of crack code. From this scrap, they decode a single word, the name Proctor. Through interrogation, they learn the title of a novel containing a character named Find the Book. The search for the missing novel shifts to Paris. The famous used book stalls that line the Seine River are scoured. Finally, the Germans' patient work is rewarded. They find the elusive novel. Its title, The Miracle of Professor Volmar by Guy de Terremont. The book holds the key to the code in dozens of intercepted Red Orchestra messages. One of the intercepts proves disastrous to the Red Orchestra. In it, Moscow Center carelessly lists the addresses of several Red Orchestra agents in Berlin. It's a fatal mistake. The Gestapo launches a massive manhunt and in just one month captures more than 100 members of Red Orchestra including Schulz Boysen, its leader in Berlin. In Paris, Leopold Trepper goes underground and plans his escape. But before he leaves, he decides to have his teeth fixed. The Gestapo is hot on his trail. A tip guides them to the office of Trepper's dentist, number 13 in the Rue de Rivoli. The Gestapo arrests Trepper in the chair. The leader of Red Orchestra is taken here to the Rue de Sorce, Gestapo headquarters in Paris. The Gestapo offers Trepper a choice, cooperation or death. In order to survive and gain the trust of the Gestapo, Trepper exposes several of his agents who he considers expendable. Trepper sees his chance to escape. His guard, a notorious heavy drinker, needs a hangover cure. Trepper volunteers to get it for him. The Gestapo officer sends the captured spy in alone. Trepper enters the drugstore and keeps walking. Straight out the back door. To freedom. Now Trepper plays a desperate game of hide and seek. The hunters, ruthless, experienced Gestapo agents, track him relentlessly. But Trepper keeps moving through Red Orchestra's Paris underground and escapes capture until August 1944, the liberation of Paris. With Paris now in Allied hands, the first Soviet plane to arrive from Moscow as a return seat reserved for Trepper. It turns out not to be the hero's welcome he expects, but a ticket to prison. Trevor is locked up in Moscow's notorious Lubyanka prison because he has compromised agents and cooperated with the Germans. Trevor's Red Orchestra spy network has inflicted extensive damage on the Nazis, but his agents pay a heavy price. 143 executed. Trepper claims he was only trying to save Red Orchestra. After 10 years, he is released from prison and retires with his wife to East Germany. Trepper lives to tell his story. In Japan, Richard Sorga also tells his story to the Japanese secret police. They arrest him not long after his warning to Moscow of Hitler's plan to invade the Soviet Union. In Sugamo prison, Sorga is interrogated for two years. He is confident the Russians and the Japanese will trade him 
in an exchange of important spies. But Stalin abandons his number one spy in Asia. November 7, 1944, Richard Sorga is led to the gallows and hanged. Twenty years after his death, the Kremlin finally acknowledges Sorga was indeed a Soviet spy in World War II. A statue is erected in his honor. The inscription reads, Richard Sorga, hero of the Soviet Union. <laughs>